All right, YouTube, thanks for choosing to join me here in the second video as we explore the Book of the Black Dragon series. Um, this is going to be just a mostly unscripted information dump from my last week of study. And um, I've got a lot of uh, notes in the book and icons and everything around here that I'm going to show. So, <clears throat> excuse me if there's moments of, of silence as I try to make sure I'm getting the right stuff. And uh, let's go ahead and jump in. So, following up directly from the last video, I did charge the vessel. Uh, and that is prepared for further work. I will note that it's an important distinction to make that, again, this is going to be a trilogy of books. And the first two are out with the third one forthcoming at an unannounced date. And the first book is, again, the philosophy and the foundational work, or theory, I guess I should say, not work, it's theory, to prepare for more in-depth analysis in the second book. And the third book is where we'll actually begin practice. There is so much in these books, it is a bit under a bit overwhelming. But if you take it a day at a time and take some breaks when you need to and don't just try to power through it for the sake of powering through it, you will definitely start to retain a lot. And that is kind of what I wanted to share with you all uh, in this video. Um, so kind of to start off, I mentioned it in the first video I made in this Praxis series that the Black Dragon is in four main parts, uh, which is the tongue, the fang, the sinistral eye, and the dextral eye. And those are what we're going to be starting with today in trying to, trying to get a, a grasp on exactly how everything is, is set up. Um, the tongue itself actually has two aspects and the first one that I'll show is the tongue itself and this is the icon that represents that uh, that first part. Now there's a note here that I wrote down that says there was nothing but silence before the first word was spoken before the first sound was made. So this right here you can see at the bottom there's a, a head and then there's some vapors coming out of the mouth, a sigil, and then the actual tongue appears. Now, <clears throat> again, being that there's two aspects here, this is this is the first one, uh, the embodiment of that particular part of the emissary. There is a logos, which is without form or without reason. And then once you progress from that point and you begin to actually speak with that tongue, you begin to get logos or the actual form of your sorceress intent. Um, it's an important distinction to know again that there are uh, multiple aspects with each of these parts. Uh, the biggest role, at least that stuck out to me, was that between these emissaries, they turn the mundane tongue of Cain or man into the splendor of sorcerous moments. This is where our sorcery comes into being, is through this spoken word. The second part that we're going to look at is the fang of the black dragon. Uh, the fang also is the key, the dagger, and the transgressive intent of our sorcerous actions. Uh, a note here is that the blade that doth spill your offerings into the cup of transfixation. So this is the dagger that pierces us metaphorically when we are doing this work. Uh, another note I made is that to be effective, to be an effective embodiment of the black dragon's current, we must offer self to the fangs as a ritual death, enabling a mind of clear that is clear of distractions. Uh, and as you read through the book, that will stand out a little bit more exactly what that means as you're looking into uh, the Book of the Black Dragon. 
uh, our flesh itself becomes the vessel for this work. So having this offering through the fang is an important first step. Now we move from there to the Sinestral Eye. And you can see here this, this icon card represents an eye that is seeing through um, the left side. It is seeing through the night of being. Uh, this emissary facilitates the awakening of dream awareness. And this one also has three parts, being the mind, the hand, and the heart. And I have icons uh, depicting those as well. This would be the the <clears throat> excuse me. This would be the hand aspect, and then we have the sorry. The first one was the mind. This is the hand, and then the heart of the eye. So just like with the tongue, once you start to speak or you break that silence, it's either going to be without form or with form, and the eye will either reveal the mind, the, <clears throat> the mind, the hand, or the heart. So there are different uses for each of these, which will be revealed in time as you go through the work. There is also a snare that is given. Um, Mine is actually, I don't know if I can find it in the book here real quick while I talk about it. Uh, mine is actually next to my bed. Um, because again, this, this emissary, or this part of the dragon, this eye, is um, what enables, again, that, that dream awareness. So there is a, uh, it's, I guess you could say it's a glyph or a sigil. Um, I'm probably not going to be able to find it, but, oh, here it is, of course. <clears throat> see if I can show this to you. That on the top right, that's the snare that you would use, uh, during your, uh, for me anyway, I use it at night. Um, it stays on my bedside table, and I admittedly have problems remembering my dreams most of the night, but... Putting this snare here within the first week, um, I started to remember dreams more frequently. And it's a snare not to capture a spirit or anything, but to try to capture what it is you're dreaming uh, or your subconscious. So uh, about two or three nights ago, I actually had a dream. I don't remember anything else about it, but it was just for a few seconds where there was a, uh, a silhouette of a black dragon. Uh, or a shadow of a dragon, and it had very long uh, horns that curved up once. So for being a shadow, I, I just remember that part of it, and it was very detailed, again, for just being a shadow or a silhouette. So, um, again, that snare is, is used for other reasons, I'm sure, as we'll find later on, but initially, that's how I've employed it, and it's it's been working well. So once you've got past the first eye, the second eye is the dextral eye. And since the first one was really the, the night side of being, this is the embodiment of an enlightened state, composing meaning for what was seen within your dream state. So the first eye receives it, and this eye here, the dextral eye, works to find meaning almost like a translator of sorts, the two eyes working together to make sense of what has been perceived. Uh, from there, the the four parts that we looked at, the, the tongue, the fang, the two eyes, by their intersecting, you form a crossroads. Now, there are also three specific jinn spirits that are in this work, and when they intersect at certain points on this crossroad, it creates a trident that is multi-dimensional. 
2D or 3D, depending how you want to think of it in your mind, uh, that is almost the, or I would say it is the foundation for your further workings. Uh, now I'm actually not going to show that here because it is uh, crucial and central to this work. Uh, I don't believe somebody should be able to just randomly see that or have access to it. Um, I spoke with the author and he confirmed that just having access to that sigil is um, a prerequisite for the next step. And I'm going to, again, skip over the uh, <clears throat> the seal there itself, the seventh seal, um, but know that it is something that uh, is, is shown next in the work. Uh, as a side note, uh, page 186 of the book mentions there is the sigil of Asdea, which is in the Dragon Book of Essex, and that is something that you use. Uh, you burn that sigil in a copper bowl, and then you use that ash as ink um, to use in ritual for um, the Book of the Black Dragon. Uh, so you don't necessarily have to have the Dragon Book of Essex. There's a lot of PDFs that you can download because it is... Uh, prohibitively expensive for most people. It's over a thousand dollars now for the standard edition of the book. Um, or speak to somebody who has a copy and they can they can find that for you. But after that it gets into the sor sorcerous virtues which are seven uh, aspects of the sorcerer's self and the development of the great work. So these virtues uh, lay the foundation for the next part of the work, which is the seven backwards descent, or the seven backwards steps. And this is to symbolize your stepping away from self and entering into the lair of the black dragon. And just to kind of give you a general... Uh, view here. I was going to try to flip through them, but and there is some uh, some text at the bottom here talks about each point and then you get back to your your last point there. So <clears throat> Again, you're stepping back through everything to get to the lair of the Black Dragon. And at that point, you can actually uh, start to receive some of the knowledge from this, this entity. Um, now, again, the, the structure of the books, uh, again, the first book just being more of an introduction... A 400 page introduction uh, but an introduction nonetheless is where I'm, I'm at right now I'm actually I think just at halfway through that that first book so clearly there is a lot more information within the pages that I am not getting into here because I think again if you want to work the system it's something you should purchase for yourself it is not something that can be taught in a few videos or even probably hundreds of videos because each person is going to perceive the information a little bit differently but um, that is probably going to be it for right now uh, again I just got those icon cards in the other day so the pictures and everything are in the book as you're going through it there's also a, a sigil for each one that is uh, a full card itself so you can you can see that and use it in your uh, your practice. But um, as always, let me know if you have any questions. Um, I'm not sure when the next video will be. Uh, just kind of depends on how quickly I can get through the other content uh, of the book, the last half, and see if we can break it into a or uh, present it in a way that's a little bit more digestible, kind of like these first two. Uh, but again, as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.